Welcome to all of you here in the sanctuary, and welcome to those of you who are joining us online. I was at the corner, you know, corralled it here, a grocery store just a couple days ago, Thursday, and a Christmas carol was playing softly in the background. I, I, I was like, am I really hearing that? <laughs> I, I was, and I said something to the cashier. Um, I said something like, well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> She said, yeah, and that was it. <laughs> I, I walked out with my Dave's killer bread with a smile on my face. So Merry Christmas in May, my friends. <clears throat> it was at Christmas that God decided he'd been online with us long enough, and it was time to be in person came in person. He couldn't stay in person, of course. None of us can. But he gave us his spirit so, we'd ne- so he and we would not ever be only online again. In the spirit, we are present with one another. God is present with us, here with us permanently, with us. And God sends forth that spirit continuously, continuously renewing the face of the earth, as the psalm says. God's love is drawn so wide that it includes not just each and every one of us, but each and every creature, each and every plant, each and every one under the blessed sun around which our tiny water planet revolves. and each and every star, and every alien being in the entire universe of which we know so little. God's love is drawn such that no one is outside. No one. We can reject that love. We can ignore it. Uh, We can be apathetic towards it. But we have No power to stop it. As Paul says in Romans 8, no power, no power on heaven or on earth or under the earth can ever, ever, ever thwart the power of the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. And that love, in that love and through that love, God sends forth his spirit. Just like I've said and like we said in this psalm, God sends forth that spirit to renew the face of the earth over and over and over again. Because the violence, which was at the root of the first flood, the flood for which Noah built the ark so that a tiny remnant could be saved, that violence is still with us, still raising its evil fist, still raining down destruction upon even babies and school children. This past week has been the one-year anniversary of the mass shooting of elementary school children and a teacher in Uvalde, Texas. And they were killed because of an AR-15 military assault rifle that continues to be readily available throughout the United States. And so today, we remember, as those parents do every single day and will for the rest of their lives, we remember all the children of the United States who have been killed by guns, which is the leading cause of childhood death, has been the leading cause of childhood death since 2020. We lament their deaths. We lament the fact that we haven't done whatever it takes to change the statistic for our children. We lament the fact that our preschool teachers right here have to take the presence of anyone on this campus during the week that they don't personally know. They take that as a potential threat. Right? Every teacher among you knows this. Everyone who goes to school of any age knows this now. And we don't give up. We do not give up. We do not succumb to cynicism 
and the false belief that nothing will change or nothing can change, we do not lose heart. We are baptized, my friends. We are baptized people. We are anointed, and we are surrounded and accompanied by all the company of heaven, by the cloud of witnesses gathered right here among us. Amen, Amen, right? And that Spirit of God is continuously renewing us, and those parents, and the whole face of the earth. And so we don't hide behind these church doors, comfy in our own company, as comfy as it is, and wonderful as it is. We are lifted up, and we lean into, and we absolutely rely on the Spirit of God that renews us, and renews our churches, and renews our families, and our nation, renews our nation each and every day of our lives, with each and every breath that we take. Our creed that we're going to say in a little bit, our creed says that the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, of life, of the abundant life of joy and power that Jesus came to give us. It's the Holy Spirit that makes us not just people who talk about Jesus, but a people who live like Jesus, who walk the walk and talk the talk. We who are anointed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever are given power. We are showered with power to live our lives fully and wholly in the kingdom where the will of God has our first priority and our first allegiance. And maybe that power compels us to make some noise to make some change. Maybe that power upholds us as we lay in weakness, recovering from surgery, or illness, or depression, or financial distress. Maybe that power stirs us to prayer, stirs us to devotion, stirs us to take on tasks which seem impossible and would be impossible without the Spirit leading the way. To take on tasks that would be impossible, but become not only possible, but doable with the power of the Spirit. I mean, can you imagine the enormity of the change that came over Peter once the Spirit was with him? Here he is. I just heard uh, the sermon given over by uh, Bill here. Peter's, the beginning of Peter's sermon. He's preaching not from a pulpit, but from the pavement. That the Spirit is going to be poured out on everyone, everybody. Rich, poor, young, old, men, women, beyond the by, strangers, homies, everybody. (laughs) Everybody's going to have a share in God's Spirit. Peter's out on the street. He's being trolled and jeered at. And he responds with dignity and direction and a powerful witness. I mean, where is the boasting and the, and the blustering of the Peter of the Gospels? You know, the Peter who would have trolled right back, <laughs> hiding his lack of courage behind a raised fist or a raised voice. I mean, not just two months or two weeks or I mean, just a short time before this, He's denied that he ever even knew his best friend, Jesus. And as a couple of hours before this, he'd still been locked in fear, locked behind doors, in spite of just having eaten with the resurrected Jesus. But now, now the Holy Spirit is with him. The full arc of Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension is Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, is the engine of the church. The fire, the fire that enlivens each and every one of us uh, to speak and act in courage, with will and perseverance. As when we baptize people, you know, we say, give you the courage to will and to persevere. The only way we do that is with the Holy Spirit. Courage to will and persevere. 
knowing, knowing that we shall overcome. Knowing that there's no power in heaven or on earth or under the earth that can overtake or overrun or siege out the kingdom of God. Where God's will of peace on earth and peace among people and creatures is fully, fully realized. It's why we were read today. That's why we were read today. Red is a spiritual color for passion and heat, the passion and heat of the Holy Spirit. And it's for every single one of us, from babies to 100-year-olds, which we have here among us, <laughs> or close. Oh, yeah. Right? Close. <laughs> we're getting there. He makes the sun shine on everybody. He makes the rain fall on everybody, good and bad, doesn't matter. And he pours out his spirit over the whole face of the earth, reviving and renewing all who lift up their hearts and their hands to receive him. All who call upon that name will be saved, everyone, everyone. So my dear family of faith, may you be revived in your own spirit and renewed in hope this morning. Even if you are grieving, and I know some of us are. I know some of us are. May you know that the Spirit is in heaven groaning for you, praying that which you cannot even know to pray. You aren't alone. We're never alone. The Lord, the giver of life, is with us now and will accompany us every step of the way until we meet our Lord face to face in the fullness of the kingdom. Can I hear amen? Amen. Amen.